from big picture, uh, the future of the internet, um, to, uh, to, to data and, and health, um, you know, I know uh, we want to jump right in. So let's do some very brief introductions, name, rank, serial number, um, within 30 seconds, if you can, each on uh, your, your, your remit. Uh, Mona, we'll start with you and then Ritesh. Hi there. Um, so I uh, am currently the uh, SVP for Enterprise Clinical um, Management and, and Quality Efforts at Humana. And most recently, about eight months ago, left my role with the federal government. Um, I was the Chief Data Officer for the Department of Health and Human Services um, and uh, have spent some time actually in both this current administration and the Obama administration. Great. Thank you, Mona. Thanks so much for joining us. Ritesh. Uh, Ritesh Patel. I work at Ogilvy and I'm the Chief Digital Officer for Health and I focus completely on all things digital and all things health. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us. And I, for those of you who have joined us before and have seen Ritesh, he usually has the the rebel base at Tatooine uh, as his background, but you, you've gone a little bit more conservative today, I see. Yeah. <laughs> for you guys today. Well, you know, listening to everybody before that has gone before us, Mona, I'm fairly intimidated. Look at all those amazing <laughs> folks. And then it's us. Yeah, you know? yeah. so I have to change my background. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Larry Summers and the Scaramucci's of the world are hard. Yeah, Steve follow, Case, but, uh, Larry Summers. You know, so let's God. talk about health data. How about that? All right. So <laughs> let's let's jump in. Let's jump in. Um, so I like to I always like to start just very briefly, Mona, what's top of mind for you right now? Wow, I mean, we could we could take this many directions, um, right? But I would say top of mind right now, honestly, given where we are currently um, as a country, as as kind of a global community, is um, is COVID obviously, and and the um, uh, just uh, tremendous importance of information sharing, not just. Um, within the U.S. Um, across the various um, levels uh, of the government and industry, but also how we share information much more proactively with the global community in a way that allows us to take some real action. So um, if there was ever a time to make a case for um, having a connected ecosystem and um, information sharing, um, uh, you know, from a public health perspective, I think um, we, we're living it right now. Ritesh. Similarly, I think, you know, the biggest uh, opportunity we have is the pandemic has actually shown the brokenness of our health system in all manner. And I think there's a massive opportunity for those who want to take it up on changing the experience for the patient and really look at how are we going to change the way we deliver care in this country to those who need it in the way that they need it. And I think this is a great opportunity that's been presented in a very bad time uh, to do that. So that's what I think about a lot of the moment. Indeed, and I know um, you know Steve Casey was on earlier, and the CEO of Revolution Health talked a lot of, a lot about that today as well as as did all of our panelists today and yesterday. Um, you know, before we jump into the meet, you are both leaders, and we we're going through this crisis. And I always do when I'm when I'm speaking with great leaders and, and managers, I always like to get a little bit of insight on how you lead and manage, and just talk to us briefly about how you've managed and led you know through through the crisis here, and 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 maybe even a little bit of thoughts on what might emerge as a new normal. Uh, in terms of the folks that, that you work with, work with your teams, the companies that you work for, et cetera. Mona, we'll start, we'll start with you. Sure. I mean, there, there are just so many um, lessons and, and, and um, you know, uh, pivots that we've had to make, but I would say probably one of the single most important um, things that we've probably all experienced in, in our respective domains is um, the breaking of internal silos to get things done really, really quickly. Right, it's not about what's my job, it's not about what's your job. Um, it's about how do you serve the people who need help now? Um, and, um, and, and teamwork and, and, and um, working across the enterprise to, and not just across the enterprise, but forming novel partnerships to, to get things done. Um, I think having an agile approach, having a team-based approach, um, not looking at uh, sort of uh, barriers as a uh, stopping point, but as, you know, how do you, how do you um, climb across those to get things done? Um, you know, the other thing is that I think it's really important not to look at, um, in, in, a, in a crisis like this, 
what is the service you provide, but what is the service that's needed? Um, right. and, 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 and really start with understanding what are the needs out there? Um, and, and what are the partnerships that you need to um, get into really, really quickly to make sure that you solve those, those pressing needs? Um, I, I, I hope that you know, that's sort of a big tent approach to solving problems first before um, looking at kind of the immediate um, opportunities that we would normally look at is, is the approach that, that we, we take. Ritesh? Yeah, you know, we've gone remote. We went remote fairly early on. Uh, so the, the teams were dispersed. And, you know, a lot of the work that we do uh, relies on people being able to get together and brainstorm, right? So a client comes to us with a challenge or a problem and the ability to bring different minds together from varieties of departments, uh, you know, and they sort of write on the walls, all our walls have writing capabilities and people are, you know, start taking ideas. How do you replicate that in this new world that we're living in? So that's one of the biggest challenges and things that we've been working on. We've been very successful in using Miro and Zoom together to do that. And the technology has actually been very robust, but it's not the same as being in the room. But the bigger one for me has been just checking in with folks. You know, we take it for granted that everybody is, yeah. just, is fine. You know, everybody likes right. this. Everybody right. is uh, doing well in sitting in their kitchen table, their dining room. But a lot of the people that work in my team uh, share a, you know, two bedroom apartment with three other people. So right. yeah. you know, sure. got to check in with them and just, to, you know, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? Is there anything you need? I think is the most important thing here at the moment. Thank you for that. I, I agree. I couldn't agree more. Um, so let's dig into the meat of this. And and before, Ritesh, I'm going to let you, you take over as moderator here in just a second. Um, and because you are the two experts and I want to stay out of the way and let's let the experts <laughs> have a conversation amongst themselves. Um, but what I would like to ask to set up the discussion here, and, and this is for both of you, and, and Ritesh, why don't we just go right back to you here, is, is the state of patient data. And I wanted to paint a bigger picture of just me. You know, I went to my Mount Sinai little neighborhood clinic. And I was just sort of sitting there thinking like, what if I just wanted to see all my health data? So what is the state of patient data from the, from the mindset or the perspective of the patient? Like, where does my data live? You know, because I go to Mount Sinai. I, I was in the ER a year and a half ago. I have stuff there, I'm assuming. I had stuff when I was in California. And then we do have this open data um, law as well. Um, so if you can both paint the big picture in terms of the state of patient data, where does my data live? How do I access it? Who has access to it? And then um, we can start to talk about the future and, and, and get some more details on the open data law as well. And Ritesh, why don't we kick it off with you here? So I will kick it off with try and do this as an experiment. Call your doctor and say you want your data because you're moving to another state and see, see how long it takes you to get that. If you get it within six months, call me back. Uh, six, six months. You know, it is a difficult thing to do depending on who you're dealing with. So the data sits in these electronic health records, electronic medical record systems. It depends on the, the hospital you go to. There's a reason that every department you go to makes you fill out that form again. You would think that if they're in the same building and you go to radiology, that they'd have access to that data and they don't need to fill in the form. Some of that is legalities. Some of it is just old process. We've always done it this way. So let's just keep going. Um, Mount Sinai, I think you would have gone in and there was an iPad where you could sign in to let people know you're yeah. there, right? But you still have to fill out the piece of paper afterwards and sign it, <laughs> That's right? That right. you had to yeah. give to somebody who then manually entered it into some database somewhere. Yeah. So it's, you know... The EHRs evolved and developed were developed for mainly billing. They weren't developed for managing patients. They weren't developed as a way of engaging with you and managing you and your health. They were primarily created initially so that the right bill could be created and sent out either for the insurance companies or to you. And so I think there's a lot of struggle at the moment of how do we change that process and what do we do? And there are behemoths in the market the systems providers who've grown and have basically corralled this in a way that it makes it difficult to get at. So it sits in a variety of places in the electronic health record systems. It sits on uh, different department systems. It sits on the billing system. It sits at the uh, insurance company system. It sits with the radiology x-ray people. It sits with the lab guys who are doing your tests at LabCorp and Quest. It's all over the place. 
Mona, do you Mona, agree? What, what, what's agree? your perspective on the state of patient data? Yeah. yeah. And I don't, Mona, I'd also love your, your, your perspective and answer to this question in the lens of your previous job too. And what, you, what did you come into that job hoping to achieve in terms of simplifying this process or, or more transparency to open data? So go, please go ahead. Mona. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll just step back and, and um, maybe take a slightly bigger picture perspective first. Um, and I would say that the definition of healthcare data has changed. Um, I, I would say that it's no longer just restricted to the EHR data and the claims data. Um, you know, when I type in into Google a question that I have about a medication, that is healthcare data. Um, uh, we've traditionally defined healthcare data as um, as the source of, of use from EHR and claims. And I think it's no longer about the source, but about the intent of use. And we know that that data that is getting collected in various parts of the ecosystem um, from, from you know, um, all of the, uh, the tech companies that are, are um, getting called to the hill, um, it, those are all collecting information that is used for healthcare purposes. Um, that is incredibly private information or that we think is private information um, that is right now completely not regulated. Um, so, so while on the one hand, you know, there's a lot of tangible information that lives in the traditional healthcare ecosystem that we're creating um, regulations around uh, making sure that uh, we all have the right to access that. And if, if we don't get access to it, that there are particular fines and heavy fines associated with that. Um, and working to create interoperability among, you know, within that ecosystem, what we have forgot about is that actually some of the most pertinent information to healthcare sits outside of that ecosystem and is completely unregulated and can be used in ways that are frankly, um, would be really, really concerning. Uh, so, so my hope is that, um, you know, both from the perspective of what happens in DC and, and you know, where I, I still sit, um, but also from a consumer awareness that we begin to take a larger perspective of healthcare data. And then, you know, to the uh, point that Ritesh was making around um, access to that data that does live in the traditional ecosystem, I think there's just um, obviously tremendous data in there, but we've all gone and, and gotten, you know, discharge paperwork that's five, six, seven, ten pages. And frankly, you know, I wouldn't know what to do with it. And I would generally flip to the, I saw myself doing this when I took a family member recently, flip to the last page. Okay, what do I really need to know? And I, and I don't know that I need to read the, the first nine pages of it. Um, and so I think there's some work that we have to do in really ensuring that that information is user friendly. And that there is something that we take away from it where we can take an action um, and not just, you know, for compliance sake, give, give all of that information. There has to be a much more user-friendly interface to that. And, and just briefly, uh, the, the new open data, who wants to, Ritesh, maybe you'd like to just take a, a quick, uh, you know, background here for, for everybody in terms of what the new open data laws are, um, because yeah. um, it, they, they may have a huge impact. Yeah, I mean, succinctly, basically, it gives you the ability uh, for access to all of that data that Mona and I just talked about. Uh, the main area is around those electronic health record systems. Those were sort of gated communities, if you wish. And you had to pay a, a fee to get access. You know, there's a lot of startups that were trying to do things where they needed data, the patient data for some mm -hmm. app or whatever. And to do that, sometimes you know, you'd get charged hundreds of thousands of dollars to get access to it. And part of the, the new law that says is you should have access to that data and you should be able to get it, you know, uh, in, a, in a democratized way. So, everybody can innovate around the use of that data and we can see uh, how people can then get access to it and manage it in different ways. So to Mona's point, one of the most exciting things around the open data rules is now if I wanted to create an app that was a front end that was very user friendly around your bill and your symptoms and whatever, I can then get access to the EHR system to pull that data through quite well. And if they don't allow me the ability to do that, legally, I can go sue them, right? So and, there's a and, stick attached to it. And Mona, I'd like your perspective on it. But first, just for our audience as well, uh, what is EHR? <laughs> oh, 
Electronic health record, yeah. Electric, okay, <laughs> <Sorry>. Thank you. <laughs> um, Mona, what do you want people to know about the, 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 the newish law and, and, uh, and, and what it means for people and their data and patients? Yeah, I mean, I think um, there's just so much that the federal government tries to put out there to empower all of us to understand our rights. And I, and I don't think that, um, frankly, that that information gets disseminated, right? So um, uh, I think so many uh, of us and our family members, our friends get really intimidated when um, asking for their information, when having, trying to have a conversation on an equal footing with their, um, uh, you know, with their providers and others in the, in the ecosystem. And I think what I would want to, um, really stress is I think the underlying rationale for all of this is, is, is not just to um, make sure that we all have the information, but that you are an equal participant um, uh, and, and, and can drive the decisions around your own uh, health and um, making sure that people realize that and, and that we communicate that in, in, in a way that is effective and people feel empowered is just incredibly important. That's great. Uh, Ritesh, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to keep moderating along yeah, because I, I, want, yeah. I want your perspectives <laughs> and answers as well. And I know if you get caught in the moderator role, we're not going to get as many of your insights, which I really want. Um, so, you know, one thing, one question I wanted to ask, and I, I asked you both on the prep call to think about it for today is, um, you know, maybe Mona a little bit from, you know, the, the, the previous government perspective. And then now at Humana and Ritesh, you deal with so many different clients across the, the full spectrum. What data does either the government, the, the master sort of EHR sort of database, what data don't we have that, you know, the system more broadly needs, do you think, as we look in this sort of maybe reforming healthcare more broadly and continuing to innovate in healthcare more broadly, what, what, what data is needed that, they, that, that the powers that be and don't have yeah. and should have? You know, I think a continuing struggle is, well, let me step back. I, the... Uh, there's been so much conversation around the need to move more upstream um, as, as we think about uh, what to do in health uh, for somebody's health, right? How do we um, impact those upstream um, determinants of health um, from somebody's um, uh, environment and uh, community factors and, and, and um, all of the social uh, uh, determinants? Um, we don't have access to um, you know, a, a place where we can go, where we can get individual level information to really um, act on what we want to do, which is really um, prevent things from happening in the first place, right? Not just sort of uh, keep them from progressing or, or, or mitigate them when they do happen, but how do we really go upstream in somebody's um, uh, journey to make sure that we're addressing all of those factors in a proactive way? Um, and I think, you know, I think, um, Again, within COVID, uh, um, this uh, I, I hope you know we're all thinking about health equity and, and the importance of really going upstream in, in, in people's journeys. Um, but frankly, this is actually some work that I did, um, uh, you know, in my last job, which is uh, how, how do we make sure that um, you know states have access to this information in a much better way, that that providers have access to it. Um, and there really isn't a single source. And obviously some of this information is really sensitive. So I think we have to solve for how we get um, this information in a way that, um, you know, when we're um, having that conversation with the person in front of you as a provider and trying to solve that issue or with a, with a government program, we can say, well, this isn't just a clinical issue. This is actually a larger issue. And here are the other resources we need to really bring to bear to address it. Ritesh? I would say, you know, there's so much intent data that Mona, you know, eloquently put. The whole being is much more important. We have silos of data and therefore healthcare is siloed. So, you know, your GP, your PCP, your cardiologist, your oncologist, your lab guys, you know, they all have pieces of your data and everybody has a different point of view or where you are in your journey. And therefore, there's no holistic way of us managing our health and well-being at the moment. Some of us are doing it by doing it ourselves, right? Wearables, connected devices, that sort of thing, where we're doing our own data management ourselves by connecting the Apple Watch with the health kit that sort of gives you some overview you know i diligently log all my bike rides on strava because that's connected to health so i know you know how i'm doing from 
trying to get rid of this 27 pounds I've got on my belly at the moment. So, <laughs> you know, uh, so I think more of a holistic approach in collecting that data around diet and how you're doing in your exercising and your wellness overall is, is where we should be heading. And how do we make that happen for us as human beings and patients so we can start really holistically managing our health? Because we hear one thing for our GPPCP, and then if you've had some sort of heart condition, you know, something else from your cardiologist, you know, that right. sort of stuff. So I think that's where we should be heading. Well, we're going to have to wrap in just a moment, but um, you know, as we as we exit, I do want to talk a little about the future and innovation. Um, mm -hmm. I know um, there's the Studio H Lab at Humana, Ritesh. I know Open Innovation. You work with a lot of different labs and innovation centers. But what I'd like to ask specifically, as it relates to innovation, um, is you know some of these emerging platforms and technologies. We talked about voice. You know, um, certainly artificial intelligence. Um, what, what technologies excite both of you um, moving forward as it relates to impacting sort of, you know, health data and, and data innovation in the healthcare, uh, in, the, in the healthcare space? And Reshik, why don't we talk, get your thoughts and Mona, we'll, we'll, we'll get you as the last word. Um, for me, you know, anything that is going to impact the underserved and areas where people currently don't have access to the more expensive connected devices, things like that. I saw a fantastic announcement this morning from Samsung around creating some apps on their Android infrastructure that will be very affordable for those who need it the most. Those are the kinds of things that excite me. Voice excites me because voice can be put on, it's ubiquitous, you can make a call, you can do, hey Google, hey Siri. That excites me on, you know, can we use those technologies to not only collect data, but also provide information and ways of engaging with folks who are not really engaged in the ecosystem at the moment. Those are the things I get very excited about at the moment. And I think we'll see a lot of that coming through in the next 18 months or so. Mona? Yeah, I, so, you know, one of the things I'm really passionate about, and it's um, obviously, again, come up in the last couple of months, is um, enabling care in home and community-based settings, right? I think it's, it's mm. what we all want for ourselves as we age. It's what we would want for our family members. Um, but we don't have the infrastructure right now to really enable a seamless experience, except especially for those um, folks who are uh, really sick. Uh, what I'm really excited about is um, working with companies to really figure out how we how we crack this this uh, problem. Um, how do we and and not just have sort of point solutions, which I think traditionally has been the approach. I, and I talked to you know um, uh, you know a couple of companies at least a week. Um, here's a point solution to address this problem. Here's a point solution to keep you know uh, you know to to, to take care of this. Um, what we love about the Amazon experience is not that there's a point solution for everything, but that it's a single place. It's a seamless experience and you don't mind paying a little bit more. And in fact, sometimes you don't realize we might be paying more, but we are. We're, and we're paying for um, the experience, the convenience, the personalization. Um, and so what, what I am really looking forward to working on in the next couple of years is enabling that kind of experience, especially for our, our senior population um, yeah. to really enable that. And I, and I hope that we begin to think about as an ecosystem, how we work together and integrate those solutions rather than coming up with, you know, the next best gadget. That's great. Um, thanks so much uh, to both of you. I, I know we could we could talk all day about this and we'll hopefully come back at a CDX session and really uh, dive deep into transformation and innovation uh, in regards to healthcare and data. Um, so Ritesh, always great to see you and thanks again. Thank Mona, it's been it's been a pleasure to get to get to know thank you. you. Thank, thanks yeah. again for thanks. joining us.